All right, if you guys are uh, just joining us, we're about to cast some games uh, from the Cauldron Hex Tournament Diamond League. And it looks like we're starting off with uh, PVZ, which is pretty tight, which should be good. And Wizard, our Zerg, is actually here with us. Uh, oh, man. Which is amazing. So I hope I'm you guys are ready for, for this. Yeah, I'm, I'm, the hype is deafening. Should I fire it up, boys? Yeah, go for yeah, it. Let's get, All let's, right. let's get it started. So this is Bethora. group stage number one still. Uh, this this is group D, right? You're in group, yeah, group D, D. Windsor? Okay, awesome. Yep. Yeah. So how many games have you played in your group? I've finished uh, all oh, the okay. games. I think yeah, most all, of you guys have. All the games are finished. I think the last one that hasn't been updated, I saw them trying to schedule, I think, a few hours earlier. So I believe that one's done. Yeah, and it's like a bunch of 3-2s. Yeah, every single one is, uh, you're either 3-2 or 2-3, so this was a really balanced group. Wizard, did you end up, uh, so you're going on to the next, uh, the next stage, or do you guys have tiebreakers to do still? Uh, I think I'm guaranteed to. Um, Hell yeah. because it's like top four advance out of six, so I think as long as you're not one of the two threes without a tiebreaker, you advance. Wait, guys, let's introduce the players real quick. Okay, cool. Um, in the top left in... corner, our green Protoss player, it's Smart Asian Guy. All right, and in the bottom right-hand corner, it's me, uh, representing Clan All-In, Wizard. The Zerg. Wizard. The Cyan Zerg. The Wiz. Set my drone a little so... early, because Death Aura has a shorter distance to your natural. Um, so I forgot that, so I just checked a little bit, see if he's trying to pile on block. I did not know that. Yeah, there's definitely some maps that have like a shorter distance between, uh, especially if you're on this position, because your drones are closer. Do you do this and the drone early, early to the third thing? Uh, you do that I and do... like hide it, play a little game? I never do that. No. Um, although... I played in a few in like KSL. I was playing against like this Masters Terran, and like I could not take my third. He was yeah. his his that like hurts. Reefer and SCV micro was so yeah. good. I took my third at like forty supply. So Smart Asian guy is gonna go for Nexus before core here. I mean, yeah, that's pretty standard macro. The two uh, building uh, wall looking perfect. So he drops the second pylon at his at his main or you know at his natural wall. So it should be easier to scout his tech, but it does you know provide a little uh, <clears throat> a little safety against ling floods, so you don't get that artosis pylon. Right. Now, Same smart thing with, uh, with like a uh, ravenger all ins too, right? Although he could target both pylons with vials. Yeah. Right next to each other. You want it like one off. I think this is more for for ling floods. Um, because I think by the time Ravager, like, Ravager is getting there later. So Character was just saying in the chat, by the way, that, uh, he missed the, the little correction that we're not going to start with their game because it was an hour long. <laughs> hour long <laughs> TVT. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, man. Rough. Maybe we will do that one another time if we didn't have this tournament at 9 o'clock. Try to get to it for sure. Uh, so, Smart Asian guy is going to go for Robotech. Link speed about halfway done for Wizard. Yeah, everything's super standard um, on my end so far. Just sending some scouting links. Uh, check the front. Robotech usually means the Protoss wants to get aggressive. If you go Robo first. You can get that War Prism. Get that War Prism, exactly. Yeah. Or you uh, hunger back for an extra minute and just tech up the Colossus and try to kill him with a two base push. So he still has both options available here. He's gonna go for an Observer though, so. I actually don't really like the Observer first in a lot of situations because if you're like, if you're trying to get an Observer to like scout for an all in, if an all in's coming, wouldn't you rather have an Immortal? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so I. I think Observer first, if you're going Robo first, is 
a little iffy. I don't know. Maybe he just really wants to see if I'm getting early lair. But like, yeah, he already has the death in there. So I guess I guess the only reason why I think it's okay in this situation is he does have three gateway production already up. So if he is about to get, I mean, he can at least still make some units while that observer is coming out. It's not like it's not like he was still on one gateway and went observer first. But still. All right. So we, we got our Robo Bay building the main. And he's taking a pretty pretty quick quick third, and I don't notice it. I send my lings over to the other third. Uh so that that's a little unfortunate. You have some nice creep spread going on. Yeah. Uh I think it could be a little Oh no, I'm I'm doing it. Over by my third. Curious to see if he starts Thermal Lance to get uh, Colossi out right here. Disruptors are, are a lot more fun, I think. Also, I think uh, Disruptors and Colossi actually complement each other pretty well. Uh, because you always have your opponent kind of at arm's reach. <clears throat> and if they do decide to push into you, you can just obliterate them with Disruptor shots. Of course, it's always like only with ground armies, but still, I feel like they, they have good synergy. Oh, Smart Asian kind of has a really unfortunate situation with these two. The stalker and zealot yeah. trapped in base. Oh, Damn, <laughs> and now now the disruptor is gonna get trapped. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, what's he gonna destroy here? <laughs> I like that wizard has this nice uh, set of lings up here by the fourth base of Protoss, uh, set up for a run by. Yeah, just in case he like sees them move out. Oh, it's not blocked. Wow. All right, we got two disruptors out on the field. Here come the wings. But I Going catch for a one of them, which is pretty nice. Good dodge. Good dodge. Good dodge. Sees the third base. Yeah. Spoiler alert. That's the only good dodge you're gonna see this game. <laughs> <laughs> um. But if you if you look at the worker counts, smart Asian guy has been chronoing out probes like a madman. Yeah, he really has. Even worse. Anything. Or no, he's up 73. Yeah, he's right at 73 each. Yeah. And he took he took he took that third like pretty damn early. Um, it's just I wasn't thorough with my scouting. I thought he was going for the other third, so it, it wasn't until like quite a while that I saw this third. Just now getting right. down his two forges though, so uh, Wizard getting ahead on upgrades here. Yeah, I guess your fourth is a little later than you would want. Yeah, because I, I, I just didn't realize he had his yeah. third, so I was, I was yeah. building units. Um, Did you figure he had the other third happen. base? To the east or... You, um... I thought, because that's, that's the normal one for Protoss, I yeah. I feel like. Although Protoss, uh, I feel like has more of a choice. Like, Zerg has to take line and tear and... Terran, it's much better for Terran to take triangle. Protoss has a little more of a choice, like depending on map. Yeah. I actually think that this one's an okay one to take, since this one is on the high ground. Um, I don't know, Flapjack. What do you think? What's your what's your preferred third on Death Aura? So I kind of I don't know, like the third that you were checking up here, the one that's in the twelve o'clock position, is normally the one I would go for if I spawned where Protoss did. Uh, just because I don't know, I feel like this wide ramp. For the one that's below the uh, the main is just really scary. You can't really ever get this walled off the way you want to. Yeah, I mean, isn't it? It's not that much less than the uh, in the other third, is there? Yeah, I guess it actually is about the same. I don't know. I guess I just tend to go for the one that's well. It's fur it's further position. away, which is which is uh, different. So we gotta we gotta move out. Uh, we got. Do these stalkers they don't have a blink so it's just it's stalker disruptor zealot and it's this is a lot of disruptors for for this point in the game and he's even building second robo starting to buy his upgrades have not quite finished yet he's gonna out. take this fight well, anyways Ooh. Oh, oh my god lordy oh, <laughs> terrible terrible damage <laughs> he does kill some of his own army with that last disruptor shot as well but that was yeah. pretty rough. 
Yeah, it, it was okay it was, though. Zerg has bad. a huge um, supply lead. Yeah, right you now. still have a huge supply lead. Yeah, it's it's in roaches. <laughs> yeah, he's got a lot in the bank too. Um, yeah, smart Asian guy actually has the economic. He's at ninety probes, which is crazy. Um, what we missed in this fight is he has ninety probes, but look, there's forty three, forty six on his third because I I actually canceled his. Uh, yeah. I had, I had a Ling run by that canceled his fourth. Triple saturated. Um, no, I just gonna poke up the ramp into oh, Disruptor well, Pain. Um... Hot damn. Yeah, so geez, many geez. shots. We got 14 kills on this one Disruptor, 14 on another, and that 8 on that one. Yeah, it's, it's not going well. Uh... <laughs> so, what I learned after this game is uh don't build roaches into disruptors apparently go for ling styles um and it's it's much easier to dodge and uh you can flank a lot easier so we got a whole Absolutely. train of probes long distance yeah. mining <laughs> this is crazy Protoss is still somehow out. ahead on work is 90 to 86. well i mean 86 is 86 is like nine. This is too much. Yeah, it's yeah, insane. Think, it's insane. I think half of the 90 is long distance mining right now. I think the biggest thing right here that's going for Wizard though is that his 3 3 started up and 2 2 still isn't done for Protoss. I find that a lot of times Protoss doesn't get uh, armor. Because you, you kind of have to choose between armor and shields, right? I feel right. like most Protosses just go, just go attack. Because attack, attack is so good for Protoss. Yeah, you pretty much have to have it. Uh, armor is really good with the charge lot style. You want to get armor first, but... Um, using Disruptors to clear uh, creep. Uh, Still has a couple shots in the bank, though. Yeah. Disruptors got a position right there and able to snap a bunch of them. Same time, couple links attacking the Protoss to stir. It's gonna get cleaned up by that cannon. Will you have enough to defend? It's mostly though just zealots and stalkers. There's, there's really only three disruptors left um, after you picked off a few of them in that last engagement, but. Plus Only links in production. And plus two attacks about to finish for Proton. Well. Yeah. Well, I didn't realize you had seven Mutas right now. Those just yeah. came out. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to, to harass them and, and try to keep them at home a little more. Uh, yeah. So he recalls to his, his third, um, but doesn't recall everything. These, these zealots and these. Oh, I guess he killed my folks. Yeah, these zealots are forfeit. Um, yeah, I think. The map here. My, yeah, my and... creep spread's looking good. Yeah, uh, and even though you haven't been able to trade efficiently, um, you've been able to stay ahead on um, expansions, and so. Yeah, I mean, it, looks, it seems like you're definitely still in it. This is a couple mutas to those stalkers, nothing too terrible. Link is done. Yeah, this is this is a really nice, you know, Link Disruptor army. It, it, it's the kind of army that uh, yeah. you need to control well, but if you control well, it's, it's like magic. Muta harass. There's a decent amount of mutas here. Yeah. Got the battery, there's an Arctosis pylon. Well, Protoss is also moving across the map here. I think I thought it was an Arctosis pylon, then I saw like the, the pylon to the left, and I was like, oh, that's only gonna be power to three. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, ah, they're missing the probes. But Protoss is yeah. pushing in on the Zerg fourth, and just annihilating it. It's like a semi base race, except we really just have Mutus here. Big warping and stoppers, though. Smart Asian guy's natural. A lot of cannons with that third. I mean, he's gotten 23 probes with these mutas, yeah. but there's Ooh. just a lot of Link Stalker Disruptor down here. Yeah. And Wizard just can't engage this with the ground arm. He yeah. can't really engage with anything right now. This is rough. 
And the resources lost that really sells the story right now. It's 21,000 to 11,000. Yeah, and the supply, it's, it's not like you get anymore. Nah. Yeah. The third doesn't have an army that can fight this. I think the biggest thing is I didn't tech up to, uh, like, lurkers. Yeah. That would have helped, yeah. Um, I just felt like, you know, he kind of got that degree third, and I, I was like, oh, you know, I, I really need control this pop. But, uh, the Vitas are not good. Like, I couldn't straight up fight, and he had so many cannons. This gigantic yeah, round of Stalker Warpins coming. He doesn't even warp prism, so they're just, they're they're just, just conga, walking across conga the lining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> GG is called. So our Asian guy's gonna take game one. okay well played by both players um it was amazing we were able to hang in for so long despite trading so inefficiently um, yeah i think part of it was i had really good creep spread so yeah. it's it's scary and you saw the the few times you know he maybe won a fight but then he still had to walk like a full screen to one of my bases and then by that time i had reinforcements and he's forced to recall or back out right. um but yeah, definitely the the engagements were uh, were not good. They weren't they weren't pretty uh, on my end. Well, there's a lot of room for improvement, and uh, we'll have to see. To really, see if, I, I think yeah. one thing a smart Asian guy did really well there, uh, since he did have the economic lead, he was willing to throw that money into static defense, which really shut down the Muta counterplay. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think that's huge. Yeah, but like you said, if you do trade a little bit more efficiently, then it seems it seems like um, you'd have a um, potentially an, an easy time. Right. I also. Oh, oh go, sorry, ahead. go ahead. Okay, so we're on to game two here, guys, and in the top right corner, it's Wizzer. And in the bottom left hand corner, he's got a perfect SAT score. Smart Asian guy. <laughs> Our green Protoss. So we got a pylon scout coming across. Usually on most maps with a pylon scout, it, it gets there like just a bit after uh, the Zerg can uh, take their take their natural. Except on smaller maps, see, like he would have had to send send it immediately to a hatch block. And I think you only really want a hatch block if you're doing like an adept build, in my opinion. I don't know, Flapjack, do you? Do you, do you like hatch blocking? Yeah, I do it every game against Zerg, kind of automatically. Uh, just just because like I like the psychological toll it can take, where they're like, God damn it, I have to take this other base now. And then, you know, you can like fake cannon rush with that early probe as well, and just sort of like, I don't know, kind of play some mind games, I guess. And then of course, uh, reinforcements with the Zerg are split up between two separate spots, so they're not connected by creep. And that can make a two base push a lot stronger. Oh, Flapjack, can you do um, Control N? Nice, thanks. There you go. Sweet. Thanks, Hard Rail. And we got a pylon in the wall here, guys. That's a little scary. Yeah, this. Even with the second pylon, is this a is this a wall? Like, I guess one I, zealot. Yeah, I think it's just a one hex gap between the, okay. the core and that pylon. Smart Asian guys, like I like two building walls, and I'm gonna do whatever I have to to make it happen. Yeah. Maybe he'll put a third pylon. <laughs> like, I guess you could tuck Maybe. a shield, uh, like a shield battery, in here just to the left of the gateway. Yeah. Um, and I do yeah, like that true. he's and I do like that he's doing the two pylons at the front of, of his uh, natural here. I think that's really a pretty smart move against Zerg, just so you don't Artosis pylon yourself. So many PVZs end with that pylon dying and then the Protoss dying. Yeah, I think a shield battery right there, like you said, would be great. So we see the Robo again, and we see Stalker first. So Stalker first, we did we didn't see it last game. And Stalker first, usually they want to hide something. Right, yeah, they, they want to chase away that overlord, so smart Asian guy could be up to something fishy.
Hardrail's saying he would abandon any hope of a macro game if he saw those pylons. <laughs> I think that, like, uh, a wing flood would be really effective against this. And guess what we're seeing, Bullnox. Yeah. <laughs> As Hardrail said in chat too, this is also ripe opportunities for baneling buffs, any kind of link play. This could get nasty. Yeah, so completely stop drone production at 24. Get a nice throw on the Zealot. Yeah, Stalker the can't do much slow. to wings. And wings. Like, I would have liked oh, to see no. like a can cancel this observer. You you know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Battery. Um, what do you even have an overcharge though? Mm -hmm. Okay, no. Maybe. Okay, so, I mean, Shield yeah, Battery but... trying to wall in the. Oh, but there's a gap behind the Robo. Yeah. This is pain. Yeah, yeah this is just. It's just a yeah. matter of time. Oh, 10 probes already in county. And especially when these pylons go down. Yeah, Link Blood's oh, no. always good against Robo yeah. openings. Okay, yeah, now you, you get You get Immortal, like, what, what's an Immortal you can do against Link? And, like, that's the best thing you can hope for out of Yeah, uh, the Robo. Yeah. So, I don't even know. I think I, I, I didn't even see the Robo. I just decided I'm gonna Link Flood. Just, you know, <laughs> it's, it's good to mix things up. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, if you ever see Robo first, that that's right for a Ling Flood. You guys watch any of the uh, GSL last night? I did. I don't know, can we, can um, we talk about it? Is that spoilers? I don't know. But uh, in uh, Zest versus Armani, in one of the matches, uh, which is a PvZ, uh, one of the nastiest things I saw was this Ling Flood, but he also incorporates a drone pull into it. And so he just mineral walks into the natural right through the adept, the immortal, whatever's holding the wall. And it's disgusting. I was like, Yeah. <laughs> this um, is the nastiest thing I've ever seen. It's it's I'm been around it's been around uh, a few times. Like I know Ragnarok's done it in in like uh, EPT, I think. Um, I think Solar did it I think Solar did the zest on the exact same map and group stages. We're not uh, watching anyways. GSL, guys. We're watching the Cauldron <laughs> Hex Tournament. Yeah, and... you know, <laughs> essentially the same caliber of play. It's, it's neck and neck. And speaking of high caliber players, in the top left corner, representing All In, it is Wizard. And in the bottom right hand corner, representing Team Gosu, it is Smart Asian Guy, recently switched to Protoss from, from Terran. Uh, he, he decided Terran was. Was too stressful. Going, he he said, because uh, I I know I know I know a lot of a lot of Terrans don't like facing Protoss. I think it's kind of a uh, it's kind of like this this triangle, especially at the the higher level. And we see this in Brood War as well, where Zergs hate facing Terran, Terran hate facing Protoss, Protoss hate facing Zerg. And I, the win rates, at least in Brood War, reflect that a little bit. It's a very slight rock paper scissors going on. I think that's uh, spot on. Actually, <laughs> I feel the same way. Yeah, so you know, maybe, maybe smart Asian guys, he's now gonna be like, "Wow, Zerg, Zerg, Zerg's OP now that I'm playing Protoss." Um, but so far, everything's standard. He loves that What's double, that double pylon. pylon. You know, it's uh, interesting yeah. here too, unless I'm mistaken, but it was his scouting probe that came back across the map to build the Nexus. So he didn't have to pull anything off of uh, off of mining. Uh, he doesn't leave that uh, probe across the map, which I find interesting. Usually Protoss likes to leave the option of a proxy, just you know, just so you have it or later at least in the game. check check the third timing. All that stuff. Yeah, uh, you can check an early warren. Uh, also, one thing you can check for is that drone pull, because uh, basically, if if they if they pull the drones and you see it build one building and you are safe uh it's yep. just you really have to hide that drone pull and if they don't see it coming it's you know they're dead it's 
Uh, but you really have to avoid that uh, that probe first scouting path and uh, potentially the first adept as well. So you gotta, you gotta be a little sneaky. Let's get inside. So actually, I I feel like this wall is pretty right for a Ling Flood as well. Like, look at the surface area on some of these buildings. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe maybe it just shows uh, shows smart Asian guys, you know, his newness with with Protoss. I think walling is is one thing that a lot of newer Protoss get wrong. I know when I play Protoss, as I, I mess up my wall all the time. It's hard. But man. I also usually play Protoss when I'm drunk and don't <laughs> feel like laddering with Zerg. So, you know. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, it's like you need a poster or something with little pictures and charts of how to, of how exactly. to do the wall on each map when you're off racing. I feel like like an architecture major. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Smart Asian guy is pulling up some zealots here at his third. What's the so plan? This, this looks like the same build from the first game. You know, really early robo. Um, and he's getting zealots, right? Not stalkers. He's not trying to hide anything. And I think he's just going to try and take like a relatively greedy, uh, greedy third, third. Third base. I feel like that has to be the play here, right? Well, I don't know. He's getting Robo Bay now. He's Robo Bay. But you see, there's a probe. Yeah, building Nexus. Okay. So far on my side, uh, everything relatively standard, right? We see the Evo, we, the, we see the Lair, Roachhorn a little before getting more gas. Super standard on my end. Um,. Although, I probably should have Ling Flooded, because my Overlord saw the Robo and this wonky wall. I think Ling Flood just wins. Even with, one... even with these Zealots, yeah, because you can just outrun them. He doesn't have a Twilight, well, I mean, not gonna I, have I, I, I would have hit before. But yeah, once I see the Robo, okay, or the, uh, the Robotics Facility drop... So he's crowding a lot of zealots. This is all zealots. Like I think this is kind of insane, like crazy. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Got a bit of a supply block here. He wants even more zealots after this, but he doesn't have charge, and it looks like he wants to go into disruptors. So slow zealot disruptor. Yeah. Well, you see the gas. He's he's still managing to keep the gas really low. Um. And so he's basically, this is just the fastest disruptor tech that you can pretty much have on two base. Um, one thing I've always noticed about Smart Asian Guy, whether he's playing Karen or Protoss, is he builds workers. Like, yeah. He's, oh, yeah. he's really good at building workers. Hard Rail uh, this in the chat too. Did he skip Warp Gate? He definitely did, because he's just now getting it. Yeah, you know, warp gate costs 50 gas. That's 50 gas not going into getting disruptors early, right? Um, so he's he's starting a a tiny tiny move out with with just like a platoon of zealots. Yeah, it's and, spotted uh, early by the Zerg here. Yeah, so making roaches. I mean, this is an interesting. If he gets a good enough hit. With right. this disruptor, he can definitely do it. Ling, bit, Lings are gonna flank bit. around and see this, though. Yeah. Here comes the disruptor. Yeah, I was, I was hoping to pick off the disruptor with the Ling flank and then the roaches. Oh, he's oh no, true. not again! Oh. No, yeah, it, it, it's bad. Yeah. Also, it's hard. Like, I, I've never had, like, disruptors hit, like, before have roach speed. Yeah, that's... You know? This is so I'm like, this, this is hard. To, yeah. to, to, to navigate, yeah. yeah. Um, so, I, I do think this this build is, is, is so interesting. So it's not the first disruptor, he does have a second one. Reinforcing. Yeah, but it's just so many units. Yeah. Wow, man, what a creative build out of Smart Asian yeah. guy. I have never seen someone do... Like the this. roaches are starting to pile up, and it looks like you're gonna hold. Yeah, it's the defender's advantage. Um, yeah. I think he, Smart Asian Guy overstayed his welcome a little bit, but still, you know, not a bad yeah. trade. I think. He has, uh, he has a lot of money in the bank right now. Yeah, he could easily make up that supply gap with a few warp bins. Yeah. 
Um, and he's still on he's still on three base to my three base. I'm taking my fourth. Um, so you know, rel Not, relatively even game. It looks like uh, Wizard's also gonna go into Hydra's here. See if this uh, ends up being Lurker. Lurkers for dis uh, Lurkers against Disruptors, I feel like is pretty sketchy play. Like I feel like it's pretty close because Lurkers can outrange them, and then you're just sort of like firing like and like usually Hydras will pick off your you know your observers or your oracles, and so you're just sort of blindly firing disruptors at where you hope the lurkers are and then i think it takes three shots yeah you have to one. watch really closely it th it's weird because like yeah you know the disruptors you would think they do lurkers really well right you know lurkers can't but they can't dodge right so we got a little gauge man. i have a pretty good position of the ramp yeah uh, pick off that disruptor finally but this is Attacking into disruptors, very hard. <laughs> Brutal, right? Uh, yeah. It's... So, <clears throat> one one series I actually watched last night was uh, Serral versus Alpha Star at BlizzCon. Oh, cool. Um, and Alpha Star won three games as Protoss against Serral um, with a pretty heavy uh, disruptor focus, also. It's not quite like Smart Asian Guy though, because Alpha Star gets like no zealots. Um, he hmm. like it expands a lot and gets a ton of static D. So basically, you know how Protoss you always talk about the army complexity um, as, as being a big thing, you know? Yep. Um, so Alpha Star is this insanely complex army. There's like no zealots for meat shields. Um, but it just goes into like protecting its bases and has like a huge economy. And the disruptors kind of make up for the you know the no the no meat shield a little bit by mm -hmm. like you're just sending balls out, sending balls out, sending balls out. Right. It's like a little scary for wizard yeah. here. Yeah, this this is this is rough. I have my lurkers morphing, but they're not ready yet. Uh, probably should have been a little on top of that. Build off to the stalkers to go attack the uh, expansion down here to the south. Yeah, really nice move by uh, my spider. Yeah. Mm. I just a slow man. Shots. Yeah. Got to stay all game long. <laughs> all yeah, I, I think gotta gotta go with link style against the disruptors. I think a lot of times what you see you see the Protoss uh, go adapts to force roaches. And once you force roaches, um, right, they don't scale as well. And uh, you, you know, you can add in things, you can go like you know, immortals, like immortal charge lot, uh, archon, or uh, you can go the disruptors. And it's really hard for roach power to deal with. Yeah, I think that your composition might be the ideal composition for what he's doing. And I, I don't know if he's doing this in response to what you're doing or if it just. Kind of worked out that way, except for the lurkers. Maybe I'm not. I'm not yeah, sure I don't think. That I don't think it's response because you know he he started that way. But it could have been. True. He could have scouted. Uh, yeah. You know me beforehand. Like I do like Ooh, a Link's, style. Link's getting in here. Yeah, some damage done. That's one bar. Not, not too bad. Not too bad. And it pulls pulls his army back. It gives me a little more breathing room. This game, his economy is actually not great. Um, mine was pretty good until uh, you know that attack. Um, so I'm I'm a little behind trying to buy some time with uh, run buys and and get some more lurkers up. Yeah. See, the reason I I thought maybe this is a little bit adaptive is that he got the disruptors um, in the first game, but not not as fast as he, as he did this game, right? Uh, he got them. Yeah, I, he went that what observer first, but it gotcha. was still it was still pretty fast last still game. Still pretty fast. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think yeah. the the big thing between the first game and this game is I picked off his first disruptor with my links. So I think right, he probably right. wanted to push with that like just two disruptor timing or whatever. Um, yeah. But you know, picking off one of those is huge. But we have a very scary yeah. army moving across the moment. How many disruptors is? This? How many? I can't even click. There's eight disruptors. Eight. That's crazy. That's yeah. 
That's hor that's horrifying. Yeah. So and he's expanding behind the push. Really, really nice moves. Scissor does have some lurkers here at the top of this ramp. And the disruptor is an observer. Oh, oh man. That's yeah. really cool. He's playing this really well. Another run by gonna come into the Protoss base here. He's got some cannons up. And, warp it. and he's gonna be able to clean up his lane. Okay, and now you have a couple of Vipers with the army. That'll help. Yeah. Uh, but I was just my Viper control, not. Vipers are hard to use, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, they are. I better spread this time for sure. Yeah, he's doing a really good job keeping his disruptors in the back. I think I should have been hiding, hiding back onto. onto but that was definitely a much better trade, though. Um, he was still able to get pretty good shots with the way you were spread out. Still have these vipers here in the back. But that's a good point. Really, pretty good army control here for a smart Asian guy. Keeping those disruptors back, that's like game moving the whole army forward, as I yeah. would. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he's controlling it really well. I got one of ducks, and he gets a huge, huge disruptor shot. More balls, they're just balls everywhere, man. I'm taking balls to the face. GG! GG. God damn, that was a good series. It was it was yeah. like a really interesting I didn't know what to do against that build. No man um, disrupted. I think playing against it now I have I have a, a, a better idea. But yeah, I've never had disruptors hit before roach speed. And I was kinda like, <laughs> what do I do here? Yeah. Well that's an impressive win for smart Asian guy. Uh switching yeah, no. over to Protoss. I actually I yeah. I've I've yeah. beaten his Terran in every series and then I just lose to his Protoss. Protoss OP man. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. It was just <laughs> he, he had a really creative build, you know, re and he had a really creative build. I think he he macroed pretty damn well, especially building probes wall, mm -hmm. a bit funky, but um, you know, creative build, great army control. All of that. Yeah, that's definitely an off meta play and it was a gamble and it worked out for him. GG's. Okay, yeah, no, it, was, so... it was a fun series. Yeah, no, really good series. 2-1 uh, Smart Asian Guy. Uh, really hyper-competitive Group D right now with, I think, all six of them at 3-2 or something. Um, okay, so we can do Schlong McGee versus Storm next. Sure. Okay. So Why this not? is a ZVP again. Yeah, ZVP. Go ahead and ping them. It's all matter. Oh, nice! I love that the uh, first map is gonna be Oxide. I think this is my favorite map uh, from the new pool. Yeah, probably if you're Protoss. <laughs> um, it's it's definitely one I look to ban as their, Um Right? It's just as short as Submarine. Right. Um, and it doesn't even have like a real pervert pillar. I right. think there's, there's there's two maps in the new pool. It looks they have a pervert pillar, but it's it's on the main side, so they can just kill it. Um, I think Oxide's super close. Uh, Jaganatha, you actually have to be you know you have to be hunting for it a little bit, but there's no way the Zerg can stop it if you uh you know, just look for it. All right, guys. All right. So we're into uh, the Cauldron Hex tournament, and here in our in the bottom left corner, it's our purple Protoss player Storm. And in the upper right hand corner, we have what is this yellow? Our yellow Zerg, representing Guns and Roses. Schlong McGee. Is that Guns and Roses? I think it's Guns and Roaches. Yeah, there. Gun it is. Ah, Guns yeah. and Roaches. Guns and ah, roaches. I, I like yeah. that. I like that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And you can see their little tag. Or the little uh, picture here on the hatchery. Oh, that's like a cute. Roach with guns on it. With the, with yeah. dude, he has Gatling. That's oh, that's yeah. the buff Zerg needs. Yeah. Let me tell you. <laughs> Let's just drop two Gatling guns to that baby's back. And we want Stim. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I don't care. Like like what? That 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 looks like the 
the landed the landed Viking. Yeah, give give me give me landed Viking attack yeah. on roaches. Oh wizard, I see what you're saying here. Like this, uh, the pillar here is at the same level as the high ground, so you can't. That's why you can spot this if you have a unit up over here. Yeah, you you just have to like move it over a little. So I know I know like a lot of like Protoss and Terran were like be like oh blah blah, blah like why why pervert pillars you know like it's such a. <laughs> Because I think the the last map pool I think was pretty Zerg favored. Um, this one not so much. Um, I think there's still a few good Zerg maps, um, but it's definitely more more balanced. Um, do, like do I think a, I do you have a favorite in the new uh, map pool. In the new, um, probably Jagannatha. Yeah, I think that's so, the most Zerg favored map out of um, the new ones. I think it's not too bad for a macro Protoss, because it's probably the easiest four base you can get. All four bases, really close, and, and they're all on the high ground. Um, it, it's a long map, though, like, so long and skinny. Um, right. So yeah. that, that means really, really easy creep spread exactly. for Zerg. Exactly, and then, like, if uh, the game can get to a point where Zerg will just know where your army is no matter what. And yeah, really I do scary. think it, it's, it's pretty good for mech as well due to the easy four base and there's not a lot of like maneuvering left and right it's pretty much just like a straight up and down map so it's hard to avoid that mech army right less lateral movement yeah but let's, let's so slow we have a pylon okay, in the wall here are we gonna see banes i just want to see the banes oh or protoss players today just like man i only want to use two buildings for my wall they're 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 greedy. They don't want to throw down that that next gate. Right. Um, very fast overlord speed from uh, Schlong McGee. So he he wants to see what's up. And a third base behind it. He definitely wants to get into a macro game. Play reactive here. It looks like. And we yeah. got a overlord scout in the main. This is actually relatively early that you would send it in. Um, he will spot this robo. It looks like. Yeah, he sees it. No, he doesn't see. Okay, yeah, he sees it. Yeah, robo three more gates. I think the biggest thing is uh, you want to scout the gas count. If he sees the gas count, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be like charge light mortal all in. Actually, no. Maybe because there's no there's no twilight. So what is this? This. Is Portal and, and Zilla. <laughs> because for like a mortal century, you would need all the gas. Right. I'm not sure yet. Might be too early to call. He might just be making stalkers. Like just like a gateway mix. I don't know. Yeah, is that a cohesive strategy though? You know, just stalkers, no blink. I'm 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 struggling to see what the plan is here uh, for Protoss. They're just getting some safety units, few links, drop the spawn, get some roaches, um, even work account. And Zerg is building more roaches, getting his lair. Um, okay, so we see a prism from Protoss, so it seems like he wants to come across. He's got yeah. one immortal, a handful of stalkers, and a sentry. That's not generally speaking enough and what's his production looking like he's got finish. five gates yeah i don't i don't know he's adding in one more gate zerk is going pretty heavy on the units right now um i think what we could see we could see like a roach speed he's not getting more gas so he might this might be like a roach speed or a nidus play Look, no workers on the third. He's he's pretty much stopped at 38. Yeah, there's the speed. Yeah, speed to overseers. Uh, this this is gonna be a, a pretty scary attack coming up. Yeah, he's I cranking think... out the overlords yeah. too to get that free supply for more roaches. Oh, just kidding. He he gets 11 more drones. So. I, don't I, think, know. Uh... I think this. This gateway mix plus immortals might be okay for Storm. If he can keep he can keep warping in. Yeah, if he stays on top of the warp ends. I mean he's Especially if Shlong McGee doesn't see him coming across the map. He I imagine he will. He's got yeah, um he's these definitely... couple of wings in the middle. Right. 
in a couple different locations. Yeah, and he sees, he should see that there's no third, right? So that's yeah. no third at six minutes, something's up. He does see it with his nice spotter links. Um, I, so this is just a weird mix, you know? This is this is yeah. like the, the, the gateway menagerie. Um, I mean, there's enough sentries here that this could really go his way with yeah. the force oh, field. And a really nice choke. He's fighting, fighting a perfect choke. Okay, good force field. He's gonna pick off a couple of units. Oh, oh whoa, those roaches out of position. Yeah, I, kind of I, there. I wonder if that's like the path that got messed up. Yeah. And now it's starting to look pretty good for Stormus, definitely. Um, two Immortals to go alive. I don't know about that force field. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think the force fields definitely could have been better, but this angle he's taking, I think it's gonna be too much for the third. Yeah, oh, I don't know. Nice uh, prism micro though. Get some weak units to the back. He's, he's got to get this hatchery to make this count, and it looks like he's gonna. I don't yeah. even think he needs to make it. He's still up on markers. It's, wow. it's not like a good one there. Yeah, he's gonna, yeah, I'm sure he's gonna keep pushing this because he can. Talking up this ramp's a little bit. Yeah. Like, there's a slide. Like, I'd, I'd like to see, you know, just a few, a few zealots warped into the main. I think that would be really well. But, uh, honestly, it's probably not gonna matter. Yeah. And he's moving up the ramp. I don't know if Zerg can for just, can't just produce enough to make this happen. Yeah, up, up to hatch. It's not enough. 20 kill immortal. Oh. Doing so much work. Oh, the other is 21. <laughs> These guys are beasts. Unbelievable. Nice force field on the ramp. GG is called. Good game. Yeah, that, that was quite good. So I guess that that's like a immortal sentry all in with uh, a little. Oh, maybe he just forgot one of his gases, and then. You know, just just had to adapt. But in any case, that was, that was a good push. He could have, yeah. That's a, that's always possible. The one thing I would have liked to see from uh, Schlong Migi is like you do invest in that Overlord speed, and he only really scouted once with it. Um, I think if you're gonna invest in that, you you better be making damn sure what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, especially if you're investing it so early. Like three minutes, and a lot and a lot of people pull those three drones off of gas and don't put them back on until three thirty. Yeah, that that's definitely what I like to do. Just yeah, just get get those drones up. And then even if I lose, if I lose a few to like adepts or uh, you know an oracle, I I actually I had more, so that's not even a big deal. All right, let's introduce our players. So in the upper left left hand corner. Up a map, our purple Protoss storm. And in the bottom right, representing guns and roaches, it is Schlong McGee. Very nice. Schlong McGee, very confident name. Yep. So we're, we're on light shade this time. Uh, I feel like light shade's a relatively standard map. The third may be a little harder to take than than usual, um, mm. but other than that, I think I think this map is is probably the most standard, maybe besides pillars. Yeah. Out of, our out of all the new maps, this is the only one I had like absolutely no feelings about. Yeah, no opinion. There's like it's a map. Yeah. It's like I, just, I don't know. I didn't really see what was uh, special about it. I guess. Well, so this is pretty similar to what Nightshade, right? And uh, this one's called Lightshade. Um, mm. And I think sometimes it's good to have a standard map. We do see the the pervert pillar, which is which is good for good for Zerg. Um, 
we have this little like evergreen type thing in the middle, hard to spread creep on. Third right. base, a little further out, could make uh, a debt place a little easier. But in turn, it also makes lane run bys a bit hard to deal with for the Protoss. I guess like the main base is pretty big. A lot of room, a lot of room for drops. Yeah. That's one one thing I've noticed on a lot of the a lot of the new maps, they have really big mains. Like uh yeah. I don't I don't I think it was Romanticide, I tried to send in like an overlord to scout. And like it I had to reveal myself for so long and I got killed, I didn't even see anything. <laughs> and then looking at it, I was like wow, I sent it at the absolute like longest angle. Um, so yeah, a lot of I wonder I wonder if we'll see more more nidises or more yeah and like more more, more drops. I think like like Terran probably <laughs> likes it. Yeah, what DT rush. Or see some proxy hatches, mm -hmm. proxy hatches in the main. That be we're getting a lot of lings actually here. Nineteen drones. Is there a rush gonna one? be the play here from Storm. Oh yeah. Starting okay, so is pretty what... popular against uh, Zergus Protoss right now. Yeah, it's it's definitely the safest opener. Right, it's so like the safe macro opener. The storm didn't scout this at all. The shield battery goes down right now. I I think that's a good idea. Shade the oh, he missed time that. That's unfortunate. Okay, the adept still alive. Oh, uh, he needs to be croning an oracle out. Yeah, yeah oracle right now. So okay, much. here we go. Warp Gate might be denied here. So, okay, Zer Zerg's actually getting a spore. I feel like if you're, you knew, you, you're gonna keep the Oracle at home, so I'm not a huge fan of the spore. But, uh, yeah, Oracle's gonna come out, it's gonna do work. Oh, he does get the, uh, and he gets oh, through. No, oh yeah. no. The pain. Oh man. Ling's running into the main. There's nothing up here. Yeah, these pros are doing. Oracle only has so much energy. Yeah, I think this, this is over. Morling's coming across. Yeah, trying to probe drill a little bit. A little bit of hold position micro by Schlong. There's, there's just too much for the Zerg. Yeah, the Oracle was nice, but let's see, where, where do we stand here? Yeah, that, well, it's, it's not over first. yet. Yeah, he's got the... I played a pile on this now. That pretty much seals it. Yeah, Lings are gonna get that. That's both too Yes, I th I I honestly think if he, uh... If he finish, if he you know did the adept juggle a bit better, I think he holds because g losing your first adept to that is super painful. Um, and he had the right idea; it was just uh, slightly unfortunate execution. Yeah, he really yeah. committed there. I wasn't sure if he would turn around um, when that shield battery went up, but he he sacrificed a lot of links to get that cybernetics. Did he not have yeah. an overcharge available? During that push, he could have maybe tried to keep that Cybernex alive with a uh, overcharge. I never saw him use it. Yeah, he might not have added energy, but uh, that's a good call. I was I wasn't looking for that. Um, all but right, yeah. here we go. Sh this Schlong is McGee, uh, he was pretty all in. This is going to be game number three between Storm and Schlong McGee. Uh, this is still group stage one in the cauldron. Wait, this is on the old map. Oh. Everdream's not in the current map pool. <laughs> played on an old map? Yeah, Everdream's not in the current what? map pool. Well, I guess there's no looking back now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Well, on Everdream, guys, we're taking it back. In the bottom left corner, <laughs> our purple Protoss player, it is Storm. And in the upper right-hand corner, our yellow Zerg from Guns N' Roaches, Schlong McGee. Um, so one of these players did not want to see Everdream go. Yeah. Back. So Everdream is probably the very best map to Link Flood on. Um, <laughs> it's it's pretty short and um, this little I don't know if you looked at the Protoss National this little uh, unbuildable bricks. 
there's not a lot of room for Protoss to rewall. So, like, if you if you look at the you know, yeah, in in the mm -hmm. pros, you'll see you'll see Link floods a lot on on Everdream because it's very hard to hold. I think I would see By Derek do a variation of that too, where he would just build a hatchery right in the Protoss's wall and then cancel it right as the wings are coming across. Yeah. Just um, gross. Like, what are you supposed it, to do? That also. Uh, you kind of push the rewall back even further, which is nice, but it's it's a lot more committed. We saw last time Shlong Mi, he did the Ling all in on 19, 19 drones, which is, it's, it's probably one of the more all in versions besides pulling the boys. Um, I actually prefer to do it on a, a little more uh, economy so I can transition out of it if I see it going poorly. But, yeah, you see, look, his next building, there's there's not going to be, you have, like, room for what, a one building rewall, if that. That's a good observation. I never noticed that. Just kept dying to Ling Floods, and I didn't know why. Uh, on average, mm -hmm. yeah. specifically, <laughs> yeah. Um, early second what? gas for the Zerg, so this might be a, a Ravager play. I was going to mention earlier that, um, so... Shlong McGee was saying that Storm actually shows this map, and he didn't realize it. I guess neither of them realized it. Huh. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be Ravagers. Uh, we got Twilight first. From the Protoss. Oh, he went, he went... Wait, did he go Core before? No, he went Nexus before Core, right? Yeah, he went Nexus before Core. Okay, I just got confused. Oh, he chooses. Yeah. Also, if you choose this 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 gate position, there's so much surface area. This is yeah, this is like a much safer wall. I think it all like if he's gonna be able to hold these roaches, it kind of depends on what happens with the twilight. Now he's gonna go to Stargate. Okay. Stargate's does, good. Does he hey, know that it's you get? I don't think he knows, think he knows. but uh, Star Stargate's the safest opening. Um, oh, he might go for a Voidway charge lot. I feel like that's been something that's getting popular again. Yeah, Storm has a probe out here, so he's going to see Ravengers, <laughs> Lings, and Roaches all coming the across the map. Not getting oh, no. He's just high-fiving the Zerg as they run yeah. past him to yeah. kill all of his friends and family. He's like, what's the guy that he just like uh, counts the people in line? He's like, okay, he's just, just taking tallies. He's doing his part to slow them down a little bit. <laughs> bit of a supply block like a... here from Zerg, but he has a lot of units across the map. And it's just an Adept and a Stalker. No battery at this point. Hasn't, hasn't started one either. Yeah, oh, I'd really like to see a rewall. I wonder if he like saw it, but didn't actually see it. You know, right. I think that happens a lot. It happens to me all the time. It's just it's, it's he gets one Ravager. Three left though. Citizens arrest there. A couple more lanes get in. Yeah, just no, no, no shield battery. Uh, and you see, he's not really macroing during this. He's just trying to micro, like getting the void out sooner. Uh, with you. Void Rays pretty much stopped every single Roach Yeah, stopped. filing down the pylon, here come some more probes. Charge is about to finish, but his only gateways are out here and they're both unpowered. Yeah, and the charge isn't going to help him here. Stalker trying to get this wall yeah. closed, but it's surrounded. Okay, here comes one Void Ray. The Void Ray will clean this up eventually, there's but so many lanes there's, 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 there's going to be too much, it's too much damage. Yeah. Yeah, the wings are going to go for the pylon first. Well, no. I guess it doesn't really matter. Storm microing yeah. is hard out trying to keep these probes alive, though. Yeah. Not doing a terrible job at all. He's, he still has to I mean, work. he's staying alive. Well, well he has yeah. no production, is the problem. Yeah. I don't think yeah, power. There's a lot of reinforcements coming. <laughs> like, he's going to have one, one yeah. void ray and zero probes. Right. Yeah. He's down at 12 supply. Well, this is looking like a 2-1. 
for stalling the Yeah. Yep. GG for stalling. With some some uh, pretty committed all ins. Yeah. I think S Storm cracking a bit under the pressure. I think he has kind of some of the right ideas, but uh, execution not quite. Especially, especially I think macroing during the uh, the attack is. Uh, yeah, to be honest, it's always hard to do. Since he had that probe there in the perfect spot to be able to see that coming. You would have thought that maybe he would get a shield battery or something yeah. like that. That would have been helpful. And he was even producing probes a little more um, after that. So I think he just didn't see it. Yeah, it's yeah. one of those situations. You just don't look at your mini map and then it's too late. Honestly, happens all the time. It happens to me all the time, for sure. That's why I, li okay. I like creep spread because, like, when they kill the creep, <laughs> it tells you. So one more. Hmm. Yeah, getting those alerts is so essential, right? I think that's why Widow Mines are so good against Protoss too, because like you get the alert after all of your probes are dead. It's like, yeah, oh, I there's think... mines. Widow Widow Mines really good against Zerg too. Um, I I think. It's better against Protoss harassment-wise, but I think actual fighting in the army... Because the other thing you really want a mine for against Protoss is if they're going really uh, charge lot heavy. But against Zerg, it's just it's just devastating losing like 15 banes to a single mine. All your mutas, like... Exactly. Yeah. Uh, mutas, I think, is not as bad. It's just, just, I guess, just because they tend to clump up and that splash damage really. Yeah. Hurts. Well, Mita's Mita's the uh, regen really fast. That's true. But basically, the Widow Mine killing a Mita is just like okay, the Mita's they can't harass for another thirty seconds until they heal up, or if they do, they risk dying to the next mine shot. Um. So basically, every Widow Mine shot that you get off on a flock of Mita's basically saves you thirty seconds of okay. I don't have to worry about harass. Interesting. Okay, guys. Um, I have. You want to do one more series? It's eight thirty. Yeah, we could probably knock out. Sure. One more, yeah, as I long can, as it's not can... an hour-long TVT. Yeah, I'm picking. <laughs> I'm getting one right now that I know we'll be able to do in time. Okay. Um, and I'm also getting a couple players that I don't think we have casted yet in in this in this version of the cauldron. That's good. So that'll be good. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and ping them. Cool. Let me just double check the length of these games just to make sure. <laughs> somehow get hour long zvz <laughs> or uh, or pvp yeah hang on one well, we cast it yesterday volnox where both protosses just went up to four bases and it was like a 25 minute long game and we were like this never happened i forget who, who we <laughs> that was the last time on thursday um, i forget who that was hmm maybe who, who did we cast yesterday i know we casted like character and turtle maybe well, yeah, character, no, no Tortles in my group. Oh, okay, yeah, so it must not have been that, but oh, it might have Bishop. been one of them, though. Bishop oh, saying oh, ding Bishop and him. Bishop versus ding. Yeah, that sounds oh, right. Oh, okay, okay. That sounds right. Yeah. Sorry, that one I chose actually might have been a little bit long. I'm going to do a different one in one second. Oh, I should uh, check into the tournament probably, huh? Oh, yeah, me too. All right, yeah. Flapjack, if we play each other, we're going we're gonna to live cast each other, all right? Sick. Yeah, why I'm, not? I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like, yeah, I'm probably twelve pulling. Flapjack probably has to scout, <laughs> or like, I'll, 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 I'll look at your build and like, what is this idiot doing? Yes, uh... <laughs> All right. I do find it strange that like, you know, in the, in the mirror matchups. Like ZVZ and PVP are both, you know, kind of on the shorter side, and then TVT's on on the longer side. Yeah. I just think that that's interesting. I guess because tanks are just that hard to push into. It's all tanks. And... Yeah, I think it's just because of tanks. Well, also Protoss and Zerg can both reinforce really fast. Yeah, tank um... production kind of slows everything down. And they don't have recall either, so you like play a more conservative game, perhaps, since you're pushing across the map. I don't know though. I'm my Terran's pretty bad, honestly. I'm like a plat three Terran. Yeah, my my Terran is not good. Okay, Although I actually I think I've got us going. All right. Okay, cool. 
All right, so I've got um, Super Square versus Bishop. Um, I saw that. I think both of them were in the chat. They're in group. So yeah. Only, be... only yeah. ZVPs today. Only ZVPs today. Yeah, <laughs> and Zerg yeah, have won it's... both of them so far. Is that right? What? No, I oh, lost. No, no, Wiz, no wizard got two uh, disruptors. Sorry. Feels bad, man. Except oh, for man. wizard. Everybody except for wizard. I just assume that Zerg's gonna win. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's fire this up. Hardrail and Bishop both here. It's sick. Yeah. Okay. Hardrail and Super Square are the same person. <laughs> oh, is this oh, okay. you know different different names on different servers? Yeah, I think it's Super Square on the bracket, but he's hard rail on Twitch and, and StarCraft, so that's okay. So he's the same person right now. Well, I think the old, the, you casted one of his games earlier and he was uh, Super Square in game, I think. Huh. So it could just be like maybe both these players are in Europe or something and they yeah. decided to, uh... yeah. I think I have a different name on like the Korean server for like the two games I've had to play on that. <laughs> All right, cool. So. Uh, so kicking off this best of three up here in the top left corner, representing CSO, it's hard rail. And in the bottom right hand corner, we have the purple Protoss. And I'm not sure what clan RBP3 is, but we have Bishop. RBP3. I don't know. But we got the, the classic Nexus. Yeah, that, I love that Protoss skin, actually. I think it looks really, really crisp. Yeah, it is nice. I don't like the, when, when uh, some of the skins, I, I definitely feel like give like an advantage. Like there's one Immortal skin, like paired with like a different set of Stalker skins, and they look almost identical. Oh, like the really dark one? The I don't remember which it is. And uh, I know a lot of pros say like there's this one roach skin that uh, it looks like they already have tunneling claws. I never actually bother to look if they have tunneling claws because I feel like that doesn't happen. So I'm like, yeah, whatever. I didn't even know that they changed skins when they have tunneling claws. Yeah, they grow little like spikes on top. Yeah, they I had never little, noticed like, ridges that. on their back. Yeah. Well, <laughs> this is why I'm bad. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I know it, but I, I can't really identify it in the heat yeah. of the moment. The only yeah. one like that I really know for sure is the, uh, the like, the terror I feel in my heart when I see Widow Mines with, like, the red light. So, right. See, I don't, even, I don't even look for the red light. They I just disappear. assume they have the red light. Oh, it hurts so bad. Uh, all right, so a core before Nexus is going to be the play here from Bishop. And a, a second gate. Yeah, um, second I think both gate. both players are, are playing pretty well, I was okay. I was gonna say Hardrail was playing safe because he got gas pool, because you know it is submarine. But he dropped a super early roach for it. I'd imagine. Uh, ooh, we have Overlord speed. Hmm. Not okay. typically getting Overlord speed if you're all inning. Yeah. Or may maybe he just getting Overlord speed because he's like, well, this Protoss is basically one base again. We'll see if it gets canceled because he will need that gas for Ravagers. He's still on 18 workers. We've been seeing a lot of early Overlord speed in this tournament so far. Yeah. Like, I don't really want to. Good. I don't want. I don't want to be regionist or whatever. But yeah. I think EU players get Overlord speed a lot more. Huh. Okay. Uh, maybe. Well, because also like you know like Serral gets Overlord speed and like yeah, they're all probably Serral fanboys. Wait, does, Har <laughs> does Hardrail have the Roach skin that makes them look like they have tunneling claws? No. Okay. This is the standard rush skin. Oh. I'm gonna go get it right now. Cause now I don't, <laughs> yeah, now I'm like... Pay, pay, pay like the three bucks or whatever. <laughs> Have I been looking at this wrong? <laughs> Thanks for telling oh. me, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Hard rail is the speed help, was... Help I can get. Was it was a misclick. So he's probably wondering oh, like, man, I do not have gas to morph into the, the appropriate number of Ravagers. Mm. Um, this ship but doesn't know that it's going to be... Get, never scouted the Warren, so yeah. He does have a well, robo. He did open super safe, which uh, I think is the benefit. This poor stalker. But he's only got three units. He should have been on the other side of the wall. 
We got a shield battery. Might see an yeah. overcharge. He's gonna need an overcharge. <laughs> he is. He is. Okay, good. There's the overcharge. I would love to see. And he got a immortal. human observer prism. Oh, that hurts. An overcharge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like that's what I I hate. If you're if you're going to Robo first, don't get observer. At least against Zerg. Uh, if, if you want to scout if they're doing all in, you're like, oh, hey, I guess they're doing all in. Hey, hey I'm about to die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, let's, let's get the Immortal first. Be safe. You know, Immortal, great unit against Zerg. Um, and then, and then you can get your, uh, your, your, uh, observer. Yeah, uh, split yeah. lens off into the main, and this is pretty much over. Yeah, now he's just going to be able to clean up. Bishop did do get a really nice surround probes, but it's, it's not yeah. he has no production. Once the roaches come in, that'll be it. Yeah. The overcharge did help help out a lot, you're right, an early immortal. Um, might have made a big difference when overcharge was still up, especially, if that was possible. Um, but observers are really quick to make. I don't I don't know if he would have been how quickly he could have gotten that immortal out without chronoing it. I mean, he also he also went Observer Prism. Yeah, the Prism is... after oh, yeah, that, true. 250 yeah. minerals into something they can't fight, and here's this all-in. Yep, you know what? I overlooked that, too. I thought he went Observer, but... Uh... I mean, I still think even... I would always go... You know, like, from from me playing against uh, against the Protoss, I'm, I'm totally happy if they go Observer first, if I'm all-inning, you know? Sorry, not and... trying to rush us too much. I just, I'm going to start it just because we are mm -hmm. short on time. That nah, makes sense. But you you were saying though, wizard? Yeah, it's just you. I feel like if you're going Robo first, you have to go more first. That makes sense. Yeah, against, that, I mean, against Zerg specifically. Like, oh. Yeah, against Zerg. I have no idea about the other matchups. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, against, uh, against both Heron and Protoss, having that Observer first can protect from drops or DTs, respectively, but against Zerg, yeah, you might need Zerg the firepower. Has a has a hard time cloaking stuff. Speaking like, of Zerg, guys, speaking of Zerg, in the top right corner, we have a Zerg player, and his name is Hardrail. And in the bottom left corner, pull up a pew. It's Bishop, our purple Protoss. Pull up a pew! Oh, My nice. man! <laughs> I had to say something for once. I, I, I always avoid the puns. You know, I, I, I've been going for a couple tonight with playing with their names. I just, I gotta, you know, gotta mix it up, guys. I, what else, what else am I here for? Oh man, <laughs> I left uh, my stream tag is playing uh, chess, but I feel like that's not uh, too, too uh, inaccurate. This is, this is <laughs> high, high speed chess. Yeah, and there's a real, real, real the time game. chess. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, hardware. His other name is Super Squares. A lot of squares in chess. It's all working out. It's fine. 3D chess, as they say. So Bishop is doing uh, uh, his wall here uh, at the main. That's yeah, interesting uh, um, in this matchup because you really do. I mean, it's a really wide uh, choke here, but you really want that wall to get that second base. Maybe he doesn't want a second base. Yeah. So I feel like the only you only see this if they're going like tech builds. Right. So. Or like a four gate. But like four gating Zerg seems a little insane. You mean like four gate adept? Yeah, or just like in general like a gateway based rush on one base. But we'll see. Yeah, I, I just really feel like Protoss just does not have enough uh, minerals for like production for for one base against Zerg. It really doesn't work out that well. Do you think this is like maybe kind of an overreaction to what happened in the first game? Maybe. maybe. But he, he, this is a big map and he did scout a hash first. Okay, because uh -huh. now he's dropping the Nexus. I'm gonna get the Nexus. But like, yeah. it's so, it's so open now, you know, like six links right. cancels this. Yeah, yeah getting, this, getting this wallop can uh, be difficult too. I agree. I, I almost feel like this is, like, at this point in time, this is a little bit less safe than if you were to make the buildings on the low ground. Oh, 100%. Um, yeah. Because you can't, well, I mean, he can wall off his main base easier, but 
you're a lot more likely to lose the natural, I feel like, if they do go aggressive right here. Yeah. Okay, we, we, we see we see the robo. What what are, what are the bets? What's what's the first unit? What's the second unit? Um what are our bets here? Observer. Observer. No. Um. <laughs> I don't know. I think, uh, given the game that he uh, just had to play, Immortal Immortal. I, I think would, it's gonna yeah. go Observer Immortal. I think. Well, Observer Immortal would make would make some sense. Now here we have coming across the map. The flood. Okay. okay. It, is this even a flood? Is this it? is just this is just sublinks. Link pressure. Mm -hmm. Like he he probably he sees there's no wall. I would. Yeah. Make some this is this is really scary for Bishop. First unit is an immortal out of the red. Oh yeah. yes! So, hell yeah. He must be listening to the stream. Probably in the past. Um, so one thing I noticed speeding. about yeah. yeah, he doesn't pull out of gas. Um, normally against Protoss oh, and Terra. Poor immortal trap. Yeah, oh, no, no. No, he is. He There's can't no get out way. to the left? Oh, yeah. No, he is trapped. Oh, no. Okay, so it's got to be a prism follow-up now. You got to get him out of there. Or he could, could drop recall it. the pylon. You could recall, <laughs> recall it? Recall <laughs> it. I don't know. That's rough. We got Lings coming in. This is wide open, man. Yeah. This is oh, no. And the army is mostly stalkers, not what you really want against Lings. Yeah. He, he, does, has he, has, he has enough. They are yeah. beefy enough. He just, does have enough. Yeah, well, he did. He's got more length coming, though. It's going to be kind of close here. Even though this isn't like a Stalkers are beefy enough. They can block this ramp. Okay, and he does. Good positioning there by Bishop. Uh, yeah. He just around and kill the Stalkers. More Stalkers. But he's getting enough now. He's able to push these lings away. Disaster averted. Yeah, I think... You know, you could you could also kind of sit in the bottom of the uh, the natural and just prevent mining. You know, you're yeah. gonna be on three base soon. Really, got to get this immortal out one way or another, though. I don't know. Wait, Does is he it still realize? stuck? Yeah, he's still stuck. Oh there. no! He's gonna no. kill the oh, gateway. He's killing a gateway. Oh, oh no. no! You have a no, pilot. Okay. okay, good, 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 good. I don't know, man. A, a prism or? All right. Well. Yeah, this robo has just been inactive. So much gas. And now the getting... robo is depowered for a little bit. Oh. Actually, I, I thought that would be in range, but I guess not. Well, at least he's not making anything in it at the moment. <laughs> I mean, an observer would be nice. And he has a, yeah. he has a ton of gas. Yeah. He needs to spend his gas. Uh, one thing that is good for Bishop here is he's going to start piling on the shield batteries. A lot of roaches being produced for Zerg right now. This could help him. But Zerg, honestly, I feel like Zerg is in the position now they can just sit back and max out. I mean, I mean, his his drone count is pretty anemic at this point in the game. So usually a good mark for Zerg, if you're playing a macro game, you want at least 66 drones at six minutes. We have 630 right now, and he's only at 48. Okay, okay. Yeah, he doesn't appear to exactly be playing a macro game. He does have a pretty uh, significant army right now. Um. I, I think, think he's it's, gonna go attack. I think it's a little Hold more on. okay because he he did see the Protoss open yeah. like this weird one base. So I I think I'm giving him a pass on like being you know a little behind on this drone count because the Protoss did open something wonky. But uh, as Zerg, the biggest thing if you've built units, you have to you have to make something happen with those units. Uh, you're yeah, not like you're, you're not like the other two races where like you know you can build workers and, and build units. Honestly. Fine. The Zerg has way too much. He can surround this army. Yeah, this yeah. is a he get, oh, bad he gets engagement for Protoss. Yeah. And more stalkers are not gonna help this either. Prison goes yeah, down. Yeah. It's it's not looking yeah. good for the Protoss. The army here. supply is sixty nine to one. <laughs> one? There's. What even costs one? Observers. Oh, uh, <laughs> I didn't realize Observer counted as an army supply. It does. It's actually a big gripe. I wish Overseers cost oh. one supply, but oh well, no, because uh, that's that's what, so when you F two, uh, Observers mm. go in, right? Yeah. 
Ah, that that's why they always siege the observers. Oh yeah, they had F2 mode those observers, so they don't die. <laughs> um Yeah, this is the there's I, he has three batteries. I think just he he might be just still kill the third. Well it, or maybe it's still too much. You know. Yeah. Yeah, batteries can't shoot anything. Yeah, sure, he doesn't have enough PPS to back though. He's got a 100 supply lead. Yeah, this should just hang on. Without disruptors and DPs or something, there's no way to come back here. Yeah. Yeah, I do think that after what happened in the first game, he might have over-adjusted a little bit. Yeah. That's, that's kind of my, my read on what happened here, to be honest. Same. Um, yeah. I think that he can get away with take he, he can definitely get away with taking that low ground expansion. He would just need to make the shield batteries um, earlier. Yeah, I think if you're scared of this. Yeah. Go blind shield battery. Go go blind shield battery. Yeah. Well, in um, that first game, he even he had the scout. You know, like that's what like he he did the scouting, and so that in particular would mean he should be able to get away with low ground expanding every time, right? You know. Especially if you see the attack on it. Yeah. Well, I mean, so I think, we're, yeah. we're not but pros. I mean, Sometimes no, it's no, hard no. to know. No, no. I, yeah, and I'm not saying I don't, you know, I don't blame him for uh, for trying to adjust, but I, th I think he can definitely do what he was doing in the first game. Yeah. Also, I think... It, so, right, Protoss always has the problem of, uh, you know, hampering Zerg's economy, but if all you yeah. want to do is be, be safe against Sling Floods... Like, build a Zealot before your core finishes, take your gas a little later, then go Adept Adept, and you don't even have to build a shield battery, you're safe. Like, right, you know, right. if you see it coming, then you can reactively build it. But, uh, I think having that, that Zealot, it's like basically just an extra unit, right? Because your, your core is not even done, uh, and you just delay your gas a little, so your tech gets delayed a little, but you'll never die to a lane flood. And if... You know, if that's what you're having trouble with, uh, you can make the adjustments. Yeah, I think a lot of Protasses would make a second gateway, and then that first gateway would sit idle until the core is done. Yeah, a, a well, because you don't... Getting one Zealot, it's not... You don't really want one Zealot, you know? You don't. Uh, but... But you also don't mm, want to die to a Ling Flood, so it's... Yes, it's, it's also... So, I think it's something i need to adjust in my play a lot i'm always like i'm gonna try and get away with like the pro the optimal build like you could theoretically hold everything but like i'm not good enough to so you know it might be something in my own play that's that's similar to bishop here where i just will die to to early attacks because you know i'm doing a build where like yeah pros can stop it but i'm not i'm not a pro by the way um so the tournament is at nine, so I'm gonna have to stop. Um, I know you're playing in it, Flapjack. Are you are you gonna cast and play, Wizard? Or are you doing uh, one or the other? 